Todd Dunn here on November 6, 2017. Today I'm over at the boatyard to put the last of the three plank ends into the repair at the bow of Tortuga. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. In addition to installing the plank ends, I have a pocket full of bungs, so I will be bunging the screw holes by epoxying bungs in so that when I come back in a couple of days I can trim the bungs and sand everything flush and get the caulking, puttying, and painting done. So, let's get to it. Test. When I put this last plank end in here, epoxy it to this scarf, I'm going to run into one small difficulty, and that is I won't be able to clamp the scarf joint because there won't be any place to put a clamp in. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to put this temporary piece of blocking in behind the scarf joint so that I can screw through the scarf joint with some drywall screws to draw the two halves together. I've already pre-drilled the holes where the screws that will hold this in place go. So it's just a matter of getting it in there, more or less up there, holding it against there while I put some screws in. This is a pretty straightforward procedure. This is in my anchor locker, so it shouldn't be any problem when I'm take these screws out and getting that piece of wood out of the boat. There, one down. And that's going to support the scarf joint so that I can screw through draw the two halves of the joint together. And all I have to do to remove this is back those screws out and that'll fall down into the anchor locker and shouldn't be a problem. So at this point I'm ready to put some epoxy on the scarf joint and put it together. Here's the plank end I'm going to install. I pre-drilled it for the drywall screws that I'll be using to draw the parts of the scarf together. Those holes are just about in the middle of the scarf this way. So, first step, coat both faces of the scarf with unthickened epoxy. Once again, I'm using my high-tech but inexpensive finger spreader. Just put the unthickened West system 105 resin with 205 slow hardener or 205 fast hardener on here and I put an abundant amount on and let that soak in for a little bit and the same up here on the hull proper Just rub that in I want to make one thing clear here. The next, this is November in Maine, and it can get cold. We're supposed to have a couple of near freezes in the next couple nights, and a hard freeze Friday night. So you might think that, ooh, is it too cold to use epoxy? Well, the answer to that is no, as long as you're patient. Epoxy cures by a chemical reaction. And chemical reactions do get slower as temperature goes down, but they do not stop. So we don't expect the thing not to cure as long as the temperature stays above absolute zero, but it might take a while. Even at freezing, this epoxy will cure. It'll just take longer. So what I'm gonna do now before I thicken the epoxy, is I'm going to wipe off any excess here that got onto the plank so I don't accidentally glue the two planks together. 
And now, I'm going to set some bungs in the screw holes. I do that, I tend to epoxy bungs in. I just ra rub a little epoxy around the outside of the bung, wipe it off the end, and slip it in there. And once I get them all in, I'll make sure they're set by tapping them with my hammer. And we'll be ready to go. So we'll get these first eight bungs set, and I'll set the last four. after I finish the project. Setting bungs is a little tedious, but it isn't that bad. You just come in, clean the epoxy off the end so it will not fill the head of the screw if I ever have to take it out. And once I finish putting this plank in, then I'll have four more bungs to put in, which I have here. So I just clean up any epoxy that I spilled, wipe a little off the boat here. And once I get all the epoxy off my hands, I'll use my hammer to lightly tap each of these bungs just to make sure they're set in there properly. Okay, those are in. So the next step is to thicken up my epoxy and do the plank install. Okay, I'm ready to spread the epoxy on the scarf joint here. Again, I'm putting an abundant amount because they're just to fill any irregularities in the scarf. Anything excess will squeeze out. And I will also, in just a second, be running a notched trowel over this, which will also get rid of some excess. So there we go. First install, set this down, pick up my notch trowel, which I conveniently have set my drill on top of, which is a bit of a nuisance, but not too bad. Here we are, and we will just run down here with the notch trowel get any excess off there. Okay. I'm going to have to pick that up. So at this point I'm ready to do the actual installation, which will only take a couple minutes. I'm going to take this piece, set it firmly up there, and It's a tight fit, but I wanted it to be a tight fit. I'm going to have to grab my hammer. It's a tight fit, but I wanted a tight fit so that I get good plank to plank contact. I'm just going to use my hammer to tap it in the rest of the way. And the screws should draw it down the rest of the way. So. Right now, I will take two more drywall screws and run them through the scarf joint to draw this end down. There we go. That 
that's all set. The only thing I have to do now before I put the final screws in is change bits in the drill to get a suitable size bit for the number 12 by one and three quarter inch wood screws I'm putting in. The next step is to drill into the frame and the stem with lead holes for the screws. driver bit back in and put the screws in. And once again these screws going into the sound frame will draw the plank down the last little bit. Putting him in initially with a relatively low torque setting on the drill, and I'll up that when I do the final tighten. my ladder a little bit to the last screw so that I have a better angle to push it in. And I'll set my drill up to high torque and bring, draw all these down. All done. All that remains to do is put the bungs in. Well, all the bungs are in. The hole is closed up. Because it's going to be cold the next couple of nights, I'm going to let this go probably till Wednesday before I come back, trim all the bungs off, and take my belt sander to this to sand these planks until they're fair with the rest of the hull. I'll also pull out these screws here and then fill those holes with thickened epoxy, probably after I do the fairing. Once that's done, come back and caulk these seams with caulk by hammering caulking cotton into them. And when that's finished, I'll put seam putty over them, let that cure for a few days, sand again with finer paper, and start painting. As I said earlier, I want to get three coats of paint on this this fall so I'll have a good base to work on next spring. So, that hole is filled, plank ends are scarfed on, so they're as strong or stronger than the wood that was in there before, so even though I've got three plank ends lined up here, since basically this is one plank now, this is another plank, and after the epoxy sets, this will be another plank, there is, for all intents and purposes, no joint here. So the spacing of the joints really doesn't matter when you do an epoxy scarf joint like this. So, you can see, it looked pretty daunting when I first cut this hole in the hull, but it really isn't a particularly difficult task or all that time consuming, except for the fact that because you're epoxying things in, you do need to let them go for a couple of days when it's cold like it is now to let the epoxy cure before you do the next plank. 
Okay, thanks for watching. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it. And if you didn't, well, that's your choice. And if you want to get notices, subscribe to the channel, and I hope you enjoyed it again.